For this problem, we are told that the Ronskian of the given functions vanishes. And we need to show that these three functions are linearly dependent. So because the Ronskian vanishes, we can't use it to verify uh, what we need to do. Um, so thankfully, we're saved the work of actually computing that and seeing that it vanishes. Uh, we're just told that it vanishes, and we can't use that. So how do we do this? We need to find uh, values of the constants a1, a2, a3, for which you can add these three things up to the uh, these three things up, have it equal to zero, and these a's can't all equal zero. So we'll, we need to find an a1, f1, plus a2, f2, plus a3, f3, as equal to zero where a1, a2, a3 are something besides zero themselves. Um, so let's plug in the definitions of these functions, f1, f2, f3. Um, f1 is x, so we will have a1, x, and a2 is x plus x squared. So we will have a2, x plus a2, x squared. And f3 is x minus x squared, so we'll have um, a3 x minus A3 x squared. And that equals zero. Um, so everything here is in terms of x's and x squareds. So I'm going to group uh, like, uh, like functions together and uh, factor out an x. So if I have A1, A2, and A3, that's x times A1 plus A2 plus A3. And I have a2x squared minus a3x squared. So that's x squared times a2 minus a3 equals 0. Now, all I really need to do here, I just have an x and an x squared, um, two variables, with constants in front of both of them. And I need both of these constants to equal 0 without a2 and a3 and a1 all being 0. So I'll just write two. Uh, two equations right here. I know that a1 plus a2 plus a3 must equal 0. And I know that a2 minus a3 also must equal 0. Now, I have three unknowns and I only have two equations, so there's probably going to be an infinite number of solutions. Uh, right away here, I can subtract a, or add an a3, and I can say that a2 is going to be equal to a3. So we know that relation. We know that these two are going to be equal. Um, so I can substitute a2 for a3, and that becomes a1 plus 2a2 equals 0. So a1 is just going to have the relation of being equal to negative 2 a2. And it'll also be equal to negative 2 a3. Um, so these are the two important relationships that I've found. From here, I'm just going to pick an arbitrary number for a2. And um, that'll allow, allow me to pick an example for a3 and a1. These won't be the only possible uh, only possible answers. They're just going to be one that I'm going to pick. And I can't pick 0, because that would just make everything 0. So I'm going to say a2 is equal to 1. That gives me a3 is equal to 1. And that gives me a1 is equal to negative 2. So this should be um, one example that works. Let's just make sure. We have, uh, we're going to plug these values in. So a1 is minus, minus 2, uh, minus 2x plus a2 is 1, and a3 is 1. So does this equal 0? Negative 2x plus x plus x, that's 0. x squared minus x squared, that's the squared. Uh, is also equal to zero. So cool, we have found a combination that works. Uh, a1 is minus 2, a2 is 1, a3 is 1, and we could have chosen uh, any multiples of that. If I had put in a2 is 2, that would have given us 2, 2, and minus 4. Uh, but it doesn't matter. We have found a combination 
by which this, uh, this equation is equal to zero. Therefore, we have proved that these three functions are linearly dependent.